What's up, 2K fans? Dom 2K on the mic, and I wanted to throw together a quick my commentary today about the uh, Cavaliers versus Warriors. I owe it. You see, uh, in my opinion, going to be the best NBA Finals in five years, the 2010 Celtics Lakers. So uh, I wanted to say some things about this, uh, what I predicted and what I saw in the playoffs. I want to talk a, bit, a little bit about LeBron James at the end. And um, yeah, you know, we should uh, thank the basketball gods because even without Kevin Love, this still looks like it's going to be a great, great NBA Finals. So, um, first things first, I guess I'll just start from the bottom and go up. Uh, I want to just go ahead and start talking about the uh, predictions that I made. If you guys watched my old mod commentary that I made when the playoffs first started and my predictions, um, I got half of it right. I said that it was going to be the Cavaliers and Spurs, and it ended up being the Cavaliers and Warriors. Um, I had the Warriors slated in the Western Conference Finals with the San Antonio Spurs, and I originally said that the Spurs were going to beat Golden State because I thought that Golden State style wasn't... Um, as I didn't think it was going to work against the San Antonio Spurs. Of course, we'll never know if that's true now because we didn't get to see it. But uh, I watched a lot of Warriors basketball this playoffs because I had I had watched them some during the season. But, you know, I really wanted to see how they were performing the playoffs. And um, I feel good about some of the stuff that I said. I feel good about half of what I said. Uh, I said that, you know, they have... Well, particularly Steph Curry has terrible shot selection sometimes, but I've also learned about watching the playoffs. He's easily the greatest shooter of all time. So uh, he's making these shots. And also, you know, this system, I won't lie, this system is definitely a little bit better than I gave him credit for because at the same time as they do take terrible shots, well, Steph Curry takes terrible shots sometimes. They also do get uh, really good shots sometimes too uh, with their system. And they play hella defense too. I think they were, I think they were the top rated defense coming into the uh, NBA playoffs. So yeah the Warriors definitely great great basketball they've played a dream season they've played a uh they, it's been dream slash perfect slash historical I mean I don't know how many of y'all noticed but they almost reached the record of the 72 and 10 Chicago Bulls uh they were they were nearly there and it's not like they went out and signed a bunch of superstars this summer either I mean this is pretty much pound for pound the same roster they had last year they just got better Steph Curry uh elevated his game uh, Clay Thompson elevated his game. Harrison Barnes. I mean, these guys, this is the real deal. This is what you love to see. You love to see a team come together, you know, bring in a few pieces, but they don't go out and buy a bunch of superstars, basically. And, uh, yeah, they build on what they have. And, you know, in 2009 or 2000, I can't remember when the owner said, you know, he pointed to the banner and said, I want another ring. I want another banner up there. That one looks kind of lonely. Of course, it seemed like a joke back then. They had Monte Ellis and nobody ever thought it was going to happen. But here they are a few years later. So uh, that's what hard work does for them. And, um, of course, on the east side, we got the Cavaliers. And, um, I mean, this wasn't really a hard pick. You know, am I, I, it, it happened exactly how I said it was going to happen in my comments here. I said they were going to beat the Celtics. I said they were going to beat the Bulls. And I said they were going to beat the Hawks. Cause, and I, um, no, I won't lie because, like I said, I'm a straight-up person. When uh, J.R. Smith got suspended and Kevin Love was out, I didn't see a way for Chicago to lose uh, to lose, yeah, to lose that series because J.R. Smith, obviously, as we see in the playoffs, he's picked up a real, you know, large part of the scoring tab along with Iman Shumpert. And then Kevin Love, you know, I thought they lost their floor spacing with him. I thought the Bulls were going to be able to pack the paint, but everyone on Chicago disappeared. The bench disappeared. Their scoring disappeared for 20 minutes at a time. And, uh, yeah, I switched up a little bit, but, you know, I'm on camera saying that, uh, Cleveland was going to win that series so you know whatever we got that one right and I said I didn't believe in the Hawks because you know I, I don't believe in a team without a traditional superstar and that's exactly what it came down to when LeBron started dominating they didn't have anything resembling a superstar to run back at them with you know what I mean so they never stood a chance in that series I knew they didn't stand a chance and uh yeah here we are with uh the Cavaliers and Warriors and um this you know whether you're a fan of lebron whether you're no matter who you're a fan of i mean you kind of have to be thankful for this finals i mean this is just cool as shit you get to see the greatest player today which is lebron james go against you know pretty much the future i mean uh normally you know we expect him to play the spurs every year but you know we got the new generation of players coming in and curry harden anthony davis and you know here's the first man up the steph curry and his squad so uh here we go i'm gonna go ahead and throw my predictions at this series um first of all i just want to start off with x factors of this series um, I think it's a little bit easier uh, easier to identify on Cleveland side because the Warriors have so many different pieces. But if I had to name an X Factor on Cleveland side for this series, I would definitely say it would come down to Iman Shumpert only because he's been the X Factor ever since Kevin Love went down. I mean, that was one of my main arguments when the Bulls um, were going up against Cleveland 
and Cleveland lost Kevin Love, I was like, oh, well, Iman, Sh I mean, yeah, I said they lost their floor spacing because I didn't think Iman Shumper was much of a shooter back then. And then this guy all of a sudden turns into Ray Allen. He's knocking down everything LeBron throws to him, all his open threes and everything. So uh, if he keeps that up, that's obviously going to be a big boost for them. He it was such a big boost that they decided not to start uh, J.R. Smith anymore, and they were starting Iman Shumpert this whole time. So that's the X factor over there. And uh, the X factor on the Warriors squad I mean I don't see how it's not Harrison Barnes honestly I mean because we have players that we know are going to do that thing you got Steph Curry you know he's going to be him because he's the greatest shooter of all time it doesn't matter what you do on him Steph Curry just he's automatic like that Klay Thompson we kind of expect him to be there um Draymond Green we know he's a real hustle player and nothing's ever changed about him all these players kind of fit their roles but you look at Harrison Barnes he's going to be the one guarding LeBron James and how he handles that matchup is definitely going to be very very big in what happens with Golden State because let's just be real nobody can guard LeBron James he's the most unstoppable player we've seen in a long time size strength speed no one's going to stop him but you can slow him down a, at least a little bit because if you look at Chicago you know Jimmy Butler basically made him a jump shooter and he shot the worst percentage of the playoffs uh, while Jimmy Butler was on him so you know it's gonna see we're gonna it's gonna be interesting to see can Harrison Barnes, Harrison Barnes do something against LeBron James and still provide some offense on the other end because I think we all agree when Harrison Barnes he's a he's a role player right now for the Warriors but when he's scoring as well as the Splash Brothers I think they're pretty unbeatable um so yeah Harrison Barnes and Iman Shumpert I wanted to do an X Factor that wasn't you know Kyrie Irving LeBron oh yeah speaking of that that's my next point um, I look at the Cavaliers and I'm very worried about Kyrie Irving because I know his injury knee tendonitis. I've had it before. If you guys follow my other Instagram page of uh, weightlifting underscore central, you know, I just opened it back up about a week ago and uh, I hadn't been using it now for oh, my bad. I thought someone was behind me. I hadn't been using it now for a long time. Uh, because I had that same injury as Kyrie Irving, but I had it for a long time, and it was bad. You know, when he was in Chicago and he stepped on that dude's foot and his knee, um, it, you didn't see an apparent knee injury, but that's what it was. Uh, you know, I felt this pain right there because I remember when I used to play basketball with my friends over in my old neighborhood, and I would go to plant for a layup, and it would just be the most painful shit, and it's just always there. It's just an aching knee pain. Um, when I would sit down in class for a long time and stand up, it would hurt, it would hurt like crazy. And into, knee tendonitis, if you've never had it, it's nothing to fuck with. It really isn't. And, uh, you know, I don't have NBA trainers or anything, but, you know, his health is so vital to this Cavaliers run because, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit you know more unbiased and raw and uncut than some of the people you see on tv you know a lot of people on tv don't want to say it but there is nobody like the warriors in the east you know what i'm saying you can like other words you have the greatest player in lebron james in the east right now and he does this every year he kills the east but when you get to the west it's a different ball game especially this year when you got the warriors who've been playing historical basketball see you're not gonna have the chicago bulls where you know they, they struggle to score for 20 minutes at a time because that, that's the difference i think that's the biggest difference is that we have yet to see Cleveland play a team in the East that can score consistently. Every, I mean, the Celtics, we don't need to talk about them because we weren't supposed to be in the playoffs anyways. Um, you talk about the Bulls and the Hawks. They both had that same problem where you could beat them in one run. Like the game could be close for a little while. Cleveland goes on one run where they go up 10 or 13, and that's it for the Bulls or the Hawks because they can't score enough points to get back. They don't have the – for the Hawks, it was that they didn't have that superstar that could do it. And for the Bulls, they just didn't have the offensive system that could do it. Um, the Warriors, anybody who's been watching this playoffs, I think you – you can agree with me on this statement being up by four points is like being i mean my bad being up by 20 points against the warriors is the equivalent of being up by four because they put up points like that like it doesn't matter like you could be up by 20 points 14 points and warriors will be back in the game in a minute and a half and on top of that they play top rated defense so cleveland has not seen this type of beast yet and I don't think they're going to be able to get away with just having LeBron James doing what he does and not uh, and without another superstar in that squad. Um, Kyrie Irving's very, very vital for that, like I said, because you can do this stuff against it. You can get away with certain things against the East that you can't get away with against the West. And I'm having deja vu right now because, you know, I th like I said, I'm in a sports group online and stuff like that. You know, I talk with other people. Try to, I try to have educated conversations with people, but, you know, bias doesn't really let that happen. But, you know, so far, the only argument that I see for the Cavaliers winning that from everyone that I talk to is they're saying, oh, well, who's going to stop LeBron James? Well, my argument back to that is whoever stops LeBron James, no one has ever stopped LeBron James. The guy is an unguardable basketball player. There's those certain players that you just can't stop. Kobe Bryant was one. LeBron James is one. Those are the players that you they're going to get theirs no matter what they have to do. They're going to affect the game in some way. But 
Now, that same token, LeBron James is still two or five in the finals, right? That's going to say that you can, you may not ever be able to stop LeBron James, but that doesn't mean that's not an automatic. That's not that's a weak argument to say that that's why they're going to win the championship because that would be like me saying, well, who's going to stop Steph Curry? Like, obviously, Steph and Curry, you know, the guy's shot just falls no matter who you have on him. So um, I'm looking at this saying Kyrie Irving's health is going to be very, very vital to this series. And, you know, as a fan of the NBA, I hope he's totally healthy and ready to go. A, because I want to see a great finals. I don't want to see a, you know, a bunch of blowouts. And B, I don't want to hear any excuses, too, because I can already hear excuses cooking up. Um, You know, I've been thinking about how the absence of Kevin Love is going to affect this. And, you know, honestly, Kevin Love is not an excuse anymore. And it's not because of what the Cavaliers have done to the East. Because, like I said, the East, you know, I look at that as like, okay, that's kind of like the JV right now. Like, you got these teams who can't score for 20 minutes. Uh, Two of the three teams they played didn't have a superstar on it. But... I'm looking at the, the way that the Cavaliers are playing, not who they're playing against. And, you know, w- the thing is, I just don't think they need Kevin Love, honestly. And that I've, that's a little bit where I've changed because I used to say they couldn't do it without Kevin Love. But the way I'm looking at it, the only thing they've lost with Kevin Love is, well, his three-point shooting and his floor spreading. But the thing is, on a team like this where you already have LeBron and Kyrie doing what they do, you didn't really need that third guy like Kevin Love. <laughs> It's hard to say they didn't need him, but they didn't use him right. They didn't need him in the way they were going to keep using him. In other words, that's what I'm saying. And the only way that they seem to use Kevin Love this whole season is to let him uh, sit on the three-point line and shoot threes. And Kevin Love is much more than that. And I think, you know, a lot of people started shitting on him, saying he wasn't this, he wasn't good. And it's like, no, he's doing what the team is asking him to do. LeBron James is strongest when he drives to the rim, so they're telling the power for it, sit on the three-point line, and that spreads the floor. You know, LeBron James could dominate that way. But... Tristan Thompson has come in and he does things he fit it almost seems like he fits the Cavaliers a little bit better than Kevin Love and here's why since Tristan Thompson can't shoot uh he has no business ever being on the three-point line anyways so he impacts the paint in a very powerful way that Kevin Love never impacted it um mostly because he couldn't they just did I mean they didn't let him they didn't never let him be down there because of his three-point shooting ability so Tristan Thompson is like basically become like a Dennis Rodman type of player I mean this guy is working his ass off on the boards he's getting all the rebounds he's playing great defense he's catching lobs I mean this guy is you know he Tristan Thompson you know props to him because he turned down a deal from the Cavaliers this summer uh in order to um to prove that he could he was worth more money and you know in the NBA nothing's ever certain you could get injured and you might not get paid anything you know if you take that bet but he did it so shout outs to him and um yeah he seems like he's impacting the team more from a defensive and rebounding standpoint I mean the guy you know he's doing the damn thing out there so I can't really say that Kevin Love is a weakness for them anymore with what I've seen from Tristan Thompson because the way that they use Tristan Thompson and the way they use Kevin Love it just seems like you know the way they've been using Tristan Thompson is a lot more effective so um yeah so how does all this play into the Warriors and Cavs uh honestly like I said I could be wrong but I'm going with the Warriors in six here I got the Warriors in six games and here's why like I said you know I think that there are a lot of people right now and like I said you're entitled to your own opinion totally so don't get mad at me for mine but I think that there's tons of people who are being prisoners of the moments right now because you know I told you earlier in this commentary this is deja vu for me I remember last year I remember the Miami Heat just absolutely destroying the East and you know they they swept this is almost identical they swept the Bobcats they beat the uh Nets in five games and they beat the Pacers in six this year they swept the Celtics they beat the they beat the Bulls in six games and then they nearly had a five game series with the Hawks they just missed it uh in overtime um this is almost identical you know this is happening you know the east is just never on par with what lebron is doing but then you get to the west and last year the heat couldn't fuck with the spurs at all like they they got 4-1 they got destroyed in every game they played now i'm you know then normally the counter argument to that is people telling me that oh well you know the warriors aren't the san antonio spurs yeah you're right but the spurs aren't the only good team out there in the west is what i think you guys are missing i mean the warriors have had a historical season they almost had the 72 and 10 bulls record you got steph curry averaging 31 points in the conference finals last uh, series with 50 percent field goal shooting might i add you uh might i mind you that's that's insane um my bad like i said playing top rated defense i mean there is not a team out there we have not seen the cavaliers respond to a team like this yet in the uh in the west during a playoff series and um I think that what's going to catch everyone by surprise is, like I said, you're not just going to see this thing where the Cavaliers can go on one run and basically go ahead and win the game, go about 13, and that's just it. The team never catches back up. Uh, The Warriors are a lot deeper than um, 
pretty much every team the Cavaliers played because you know I think the Bulls were the deepest team the Cavaliers played and um you know nobody on the bench showed up but I mean here you got Sean Livingston coming off the bench you got Iguodala coming off the bench um if they need David Lee he'll come off there you know they had to, they got a full starting five um you know these Warriors they're the real deal this is going to be very interesting this is just my pick um I also believe, just in my opinion, that the Warriors are a little bit more prepared for this because, like I said, uh, it has a lot to do with the conferences that they're playing in. When you look at where the Warriors have played, who the Warriors have played and who the Cavaliers have played thus far, and you look at how the games have turned out, the Warriors went up against the Pelicans, who, you know, would have been, would have made some noise in the East more than likely with the way they played. Because even though they got swept, they, I mean, they played, they were in most of the games they played the Warriors with, or they played uh, with the Warriors. Um, then they went and played the Grizzlies. Like I said, you know, they've already beaten a top rated defense and they did it it wasn't that hard for them to do it either i mean the grizzlies really couldn't hang with the uh with the warriors now given the grizzlies don't have the scoring ability that the uh cavaliers do but still like i, I see a lot of people say the cavaliers defense is top notch well it's like well so were the grizzlies and they couldn't fuck with the warriors you see what i'm saying and then you go and um you beat the Rockets, who the Rockets, you know, I mean, that's a good team. I mean, they give them credit. They came back 3-1 against the Clippers. You know, you got James Harden over there. They don't like any scoring ability. They're, they're bigger inside than the uh, Cavaliers are. They had Dwight Howard, and uh, Dwight Howard was playing pretty good this series. You know, he just couldn't, you know, keep it together long enough for them to uh, mount a comeback or whatever. And I, I think, you know, they played far superior teams uh, thus far. I think they're a lot more prepared for this. Um... I think one thing that the Cavaliers do definitely have going for them is LeBron James and the fact that he is the greatest player uh, on the floor at all times, yeah, heads and shoulders above everyone else. I mean, that's just who LeBron James is. He makes the people around him better, um, passing ability, rebounding ability. And the thing is, LeBron James, he is going to be ready for this series because when you look at what's on the line for LeBron James right now, this is his second time trying to fulfill his promise of bringing a championship to Cleveland. This is... Uh, Damn, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, this is a chance for his third ring, too, because, you know, that's mainly, you know, the knock on LeBron every year is, every year is he doesn't have enough rings. Uh, you know, everyone, a lot of people say that. You know, we know how much this means to him, especially, you know, and you. this will be the greatest run by him in a long time, too, because when you think about it, I mean, give him credit. I know I, I keep saying that it's the East, and that's fine, but still you got to give him credit because, I mean, when Shumper, I mean, when J.R. Smith and Love, you know, they were both out, he led this team and Kyrie Irving has been like a you know he's been in and out of the playoffs basically and LeBron James has still been playing incredible basketball so if he wins a championship on top of this there's never going to be anything anyone can say so that's one thing they have going for them because LeBron James is going to be a mad dog coming out this series you know I know if you watch his press conference on NBA TV he said that you know he's not promising a championship but uh he's going to have these guys ready he's going to lead them but that guy trust me he is getting ready for this you know if LeBron he could really uh he has a chance to solidify himself uh in the uh, history books even more than he already has um, which leads me into my next thing so you know you've got my prediction now um i've got the warriors in six for multiple reasons i just think that overall you know without kevin love you know i don't really think that's even necessary to mention him though now that they feel his spot and it's mostly without a uh, fully healthy Kyrie irving you know i think that the warriors have the advantage here but you know like i said six games and it's not going to be easy that's just my opinion um, like I said, you know, if you have a different opinion, you can voice it and you can also voice it without getting pissed off. Because like I said, uh, you know, I remember my first commentary. I had said some stuff about the Warriors, which, you know, all I ever said was what that which which was true. That Stephen Curry, you know, is a terrible shot selection. I didn't think that was going to work for the playoffs, but I was wrong. It did. The uh, guy is definitely the greatest shooter of all time. And, you know, somebody got mad at me for saying that. And it's like, you know, if you're a fanboy, just don't comment. Like, you know, you can have your opinion. I can have mine. I said at the end of that video, I had a disclaimer saying I could be wrong and I hope I'm wrong because I wanted to I wanted to see a different finals this year so you know if you can't handle my opinion i mean just don't don't get pissed off about it we all have ours you know i could be wrong about this cleveland could win okay so you got my disclaimer right there if you're still mad you know i've got nothing for you but you can definitely voice your opinion you know say what you want to say you ain't gotta nobody you don't have to be a little bitch about it <laughs> like that one kid you know so anyways um I wanted to lead this uh, commentary, kind of end it with a little commentary about LeBron James, because I know a lot of y'all have probably followed me for a while and noticed a difference. Um, when you followed me and I first owned NBA 2K highlights, you know, I was probably, no, I was known as that kid who hated the Miami Heat, who hated LeBron James. And, uh, you know, I just want to kind of put it out there that, you know, I've matured and I've grown up since then. 
So uh, no, hell no, I'm not saying I'm a LeBron James fan because I'm never gonna be a LeBron James fan. You know, that's just not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm a, you know, I'm a Celtics fan for life, and uh, you know, that is my rival. But uh, you know, I just wanted to make sure everyone, you know, knows that I owned the Made 2 Guy highlights since I was just ending high school, and I was still, you know, around 16, 17, 18 at this time. This is when uh, you know, the Celtics were in a heated rivalry, and I think everyone grew up as a kid probably with a player that they hated. And um, I don't know if everyone grew up like I did, but the way I've grown up is that if I have never talked to you before on social media, I've never talked to you as a person, unless you do something really shitty to somebody or something like that, it's kind of hard for me to hate you. And the thing is, you know, I hated LeBron as a kid, but growing up, it's like I've never talked to the guy before to be able to lend an opinion like that on him. So, no, I don't hate LeBron James. Um, and the way I feel about him now, you know, I look at him, you know, pretty much different than anybody, I think. I think I have a real unique look on LeBron James. I don't hate him at all, but I'm also not his friend. I have a, an, an extremely neutral uh, position on him, which means... I basically, you know, see a lot of the shit that goes on about him. And I basically split it up into two categories. Those are those people who completely hate LeBron James. And there's the people that dick ride him way too much. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm neutral. So I get to look at it from both viewpoints right now. And, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to say I hate both of y'all. Like, <laughs> you know, I don't have a problem if you're a LeBron James fan because I'm a Derrick Rose fan. I don't have a problem if you're a LeBron fan. The specific people that I target is his fan boys. The people who act like he's God. The people who act like he's never done anything wrong in his career. Career. See, you know, I can acknowledge that LeBron James has definitely done some shady things in his career. Like, you know, flip, you know, the, the switching of teams, how he handled that, you know, the circumstances surrounding that. All that's happened. But at the end of the day, LeBron is still a good person. You know, you could, if you're going to look up to him as a role model, you definitely can. And um, I think it's time for people to kind of acknowledge, you know, how great the dude is. I see a lot of people who, when, when you mention his name uh, with Michael Jordan, you know, I see a lot of people just kind of like curl up and, you know, hate you for that. But, I mean, I'm looking at this going, if he wins the NBA championship this year, I don't see how you can't at least give him an argument as one of the, as the greatest of all time. I mean, it's around that time. The dude just had, what was it, 37 points, 13 rebounds, 18, not bad, 18 rebounds, 13 assists. Um, he's the full package. And when you look at what he's doing, the reason I say that, you know, he deserves an argument as the greatest of all time, you beat the Warriors, is because he doesn't have the superstars that he normally has every year. I mean, when you go with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, you know, you don't really get a whole lot of credit from me for that because I feel like, you know, yeah, they were two of the top players, whether people want to accept that or not. Those were two of the top players in the NBA when he was with them. It's every year except 2014. That was it. Um, but this year, I mean, you've got half of Kyrie Irving and you've got no Kevin Love. So you're working with guys, the same guys that Carmelo Anthony had. He had J.R. Smith. He had Iman Shumpert. And they weren't doing shit in New York. But look look at how they transformed now. J.R. Smith, gonna look, he looks like the NBA Sixth Man of the Year again. And Shumpert is all of a sudden, you know, playing amazing basketball. Um, and I just think if you beat a team like the Warriors with what he has now... If you beat the Warriors, because don't don't knock the Warriors off. I don't want to hear anything about, oh, they're unexperienced and this was their first time. The Warriors have played a dream season all year. And the only thing that's going to cap that off is an NBA championship. If LeBron, if they win this year and LeBron has amazing stats, you got to really respect this guy. No matter what he's done in his past, no matter what he's done, you know, switching teams. You've got to, you've definitely got to mention his name in the greatest of all time category. I don't care what it, how much of a fan of Kobe you are, how much of a fan of uh, Michael Jordan you are. You know, I just see all this stuff on the internet about how you know he's not top ten and oh he's done this and oh he's done that. And it's like you know I feel like that's got to stop. But by that same token, I also feel like all the dick riding has to stop because you know the the main. I'm not gonna lie. One of the main reasons that I'm always on the side of whoever's playing LeBron James, even though I don't dislike him, is because he has tons and tons of fanboys who are just they are just out of this world annoying with some of the shit that they say. And um, you know I'm not afraid to say that because I've read so much of it by now. It just makes me sick. But uh, you know there are it, it, like I said it's complicated. There's the haters. There's the dick riders. And then there's just like people like me who just look at this from both sides going you know just stop like there's so much drama around this dude all the time like just let him be him and uh yeah my my honest opinion just like i said earlier uh if he wins this finals all that shit everything just has to kind of stop like we have to just everyone just kind of has to face reality 
uh this will be his third ring if he wins and uh he's clearly not done yet you know he's clear he still has some time to go uh even though i think it only gets harder from here because i think you know we see the new generation of players coming in uh bearing any injuries the east is gonna actually be a legit conference next year with uh you know d rose paul george you know and yeah think think in the west especially the west is getting tougher because you know anthony davis james harden they've made their presence known now so it's not going to be just the spurs every year um but yeah like if he uh this will be his third ring this year and if you do it against a team like the warriors i mean there's absolutely nothing anyone can say there's no excuse if the warriors is the warriors lose to them there's absolutely no excuse i also think that uh this is the most pressure he's ever had you know no one's i don't see a lot of people talking about it right now but when you look at what's hanging over lebron right now you know he's made the statement he wants to be the greatest of all time uh what he has hanging over his head right now is a two and six finals record uh his second failed promise well he didn't he didn't promise cleveland this time of winning well winning a championship he did that years ago but it'd be his second failure to bring uh cleveland an nba championship and it would bring a ton of exposure because you know like what i said earlier was that um you know a lot of people keep saying all this stuff about you know like the prisoners of the moments basically you know how we always talk about how weak the east is but then a lot of people try to make it seem like it's not weak well i mean if he goes and he loses to the warriors people are gonna say well yeah i mean this is what we were talking about the whole time you can dominate the east but you can't dominate the west like i mean you can't uh i mean not to say lebron can't dominate the west he can dominate the nba but i'm saying like you know your team y'all can beat all these east teams with no problem but you know like we said earlier the west is just tougher so you know he has a lot hanging over his head and um it's clearly more pressure on him to win it than it is on the warriors because i think we see the warriors are very young and spry they're going to be around for a long time so um yeah that's that's all i want to say about lebron james you know respect his greatness i'm not his fan i'll never be a fan uh but respect his greatness and at least you know acknowledge we you know what he's done and uh, if he wins this finals you know acknowledge what he did because there's absolutely nothing you can say if you beat the warriors four times like there's nothing you can say that's not that's gonna cover this one up um yeah and on the warrior side you know uh congratulations to my bad i meant to congr- i don't know if i did this at the beginning of the commentary but congratulations to uh golden state and cleveland fans you know it's been a long time coming for both of y'all but especially warriors fans because whoo shit y'all have been y'all haven't had a chance at this in like what like 40 years so you know this is an exciting time especially if you've been a real fan you know for a long time if you stuck with golden state uh this must be a really exciting time for y'all and um basically you know don't worry about it if y'all don't well okay injuries i think we see with the oklahoma city thunder injuries can easily fuck that up so i'm not going to tell you don't worry if y'all don't win this championship but i mean feel good about the times that are upon y'all though because i think y'all are only going to get better (laughs) you know steph Curry. i mean this is your first year with steve kerr uh your first year going this deep into the playoffs i didn't think y'all had made a west finals since i don't even know how long so yeah uh, yeah both of y'all just enjoy this time and as, as fans of the nba you know let all the dick riding and the hating stop you know this is just fun i mean my thing is would you have rather watched the hawks and warriors i wouldn't have like I'll, pro- I'll be honest with you i mean congrats to the hawks if they would have won but i probably wasn't gonna watch the hawks and warriors play that's just me so uh yeah man be you know enjoy this finals um the last time i was this excited was probably when kevin durant versus lebron happened even though that that finals kind of turned out to be a little bit of a dud you know i don't think it's gonna be that this year because cleveland is not right now right now they're not as talented as the heat were because the heat had a healthy weight in Bosch in 2012 and uh, they don't have they don't have healthy superstars around LeBron right now. So this is a little bit different. But yeah, man, as fans of the NBA, this is a treat. And uh, enjoy it. LeBron versus Steph Curry. I think it's going to be the greatest thing we've seen in a long time. So I'm out.